All right, everybody, good afternoon. And earlier today, I made a video talking about how the Seahawks have made a commitment of sorts, not a complete and total and full commitment, but a commitment of some kind to Geno Smith. And what they've basically done is made him completely uncuttable. We cannot cut him, cannot release him. It would cost about the same amount of money as it would to just keep him. And there's no universe where Geno Smith has negative value in this league as a quarterback. So e even his haters would acknowledge that, I think. So there's no cutting him. What could happen with Geno Smith, however, and I am going to take one video to talk about this, is trading him. And like I said in the video earlier today, we basically have one month to decide whether or not we want to trade him. At that point, his roster bonus kicks in and he becomes, well, not untradeable, but it would be incredibly stupid to trade him at that point because you've already given him $9.6 million. It, it's by some extent too late. You're not saving money then. Like, at that point, the amount of capital that you'd have to get from a team to make it worth your time to trade Geno Smith would be... It, it's not happening. So, I I um I think that's the uh, time frame we're working with here with Geno Smith. And I do think that it is within the realm, realm of possibility. Um, when I took a statistics class when I was in college, when I was much younger, I remember them saying that if something has a less than 5% chance of happening, it's considered statistically insignificant. I do think there's probably a 5% or better chance of a Geno Smith trade. But I also think the percent chance is less than 10%. So this is not something I'm going to belabor in video after video after video over the next month. But I do want to take one video to at least entertain the possibility. Now here's the thing. Geno Smith going to be turning 34 relatively soon here, um, getting up there in age, been in the league a long time. Um, I understand that a player like that is not going to have massive value when you compare him to these guys who might be available who are younger, or guys in the draft who are much younger than that. However, when you look at Geno Smith and you try to really stack up what he's worth, I see a quarterback who's played really good for the last two seasons in some not very good situations, overcoming terrible defenses, overcoming really bad offensive lines, overcoming in some regards a not very good coaching staff. So let me lead off with this. If the Seattle Seahawks trade Geno Smith, I'm not giving him away. I need a real asset back for that. Because not only are you getting a quarterback who's been one of the 10 best quarterbacks in the league over the last two years, I think pretty clearly. Now, it's not completely fair because you have guys like Jordan Love and C.J. Stroud who weren't even playing football in 2022. So, of course, Geno's going to be better than them over the last two years. But even last year, I think he's right there in that conversation for being one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Um, whenever I try to put together a list, I always come out with Geno Smith being somewhere from the 8th to 11th best quarterback in the league somewhere in there and you're getting him at a steep discount if you trade for him because remember even if you trade him the Seahawks are still giving him most of his cap hit for 2024 17.4 million dollars so the team that trades for him only has to pay out his base salary and I believe his workout bonus so the team that trades for Gino would only be on the hook for about 13 point, I think it's 13 point, uh, let me, let me see if they have it here, 13.8 million. So you are getting a good quarterback, a starting caliber quality quarterback who's got two straight seasons of winning records at a steep discount. So straight up, if I'm trading Geno Smith, I got to get a late first round pick or an equivalent back. And this is the part where a lot of people are going to say, well, there's no way anybody's going to give that up for Geno Smith. Okay, then I'm not trading him. Like, you got to give something up to get something. That should be how this works. And you're getting something with Geno Smith, something that is pretty rare in this league right now. A quarterback willing to leave money on the table. A quarterback who has shown a willingness to take way less than he could get if he really wanted to push it. And if you don't believe that, consider that Daniel Jones and Derek Carr both got way more money 
over a longer-term contract than Geno Smith did last offseason. Consider that. Consider that guys like Jalen Hurts, a tush-push merchant, and Justin Herbert, who has a losing record in the NFL as a quarterback and zero playoff wins, same as Geno, is making double what Geno Smith is. So, anyway... If I'm trading him, I need a late first round pick or an equivalent. And an equivalent would be like second plus third. So what are some teams that would consider doing that? As of right now, I think these, uh, th this list I have on screen here, these are the nine teams that are either about to or currently really need a quarterback. And you could maybe throw the Miami Dolphins and New York Giants in here as well. But as of right now, I don't think so. And I don't think those are the kinds of teams that would go after Geno anyway, because even though Geno might be an upgrade, the situation's not there. Giants and Dolphins really both have awful offensive lines, so I don't know why you'd give up a bunch of resources for a quarterback um, on any level when you still need to find out if the quarterback you have is worth it. And in the case of the Giants with Daniel Jones, there's a ton of dead money off of moving off of Daniel Jones anyway, so... Um, I don't think those two teams would be in play, but these are the nine teams that need a quarterback. You've got the Patriots, the Steelers, the Raiders, the Broncos, the Commanders, the Vikings, the Bears, the Bucks, and the Falcons. Um, the Bears still do have fields under contract, but I don't think they're enamored with that situation anymore. Wilson is still under contract with the Broncos, but they're clearly chomping at the bit to move on. The Raiders still have Garoppolo, but same deal there. So these are the nine teams you could consider doing some kind of deal with. Now, if we go to Tankathon here, you can see the top three picks, Bears, Commanders, Patriots. So I don't think any of those teams are going to really be on the table here for a Geno Smith trade. Number one, their picks are too high. Even the Bears' second first round pick, which is at number nine, is too high. They're not going to trade those picks for Geno. And I don't even think you could do something where it's like their first for Geno plus your first. The pick's just way too far up there. Maybe the Bears would be willing to do it with number nine, but if you're up in the top three, just get the quarterback that you like there. Just get Caleb, get Drake May, get Jaden Daniels. These three teams are going to have access to a quarterback um, that, that they don't need to trade for that's going to be over 10 years younger than Geno. So I don't think they have a need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and cross off the Patriots. Let me... Uh, Get out the, uh, where's the uh, strike through thing? God, I hate how hard they make this. Okay, let's just go ahead and do the underscore there just to say that they're crossed off because I can't find the strike through graphic, whatever. But anyway, they're off the board. Um, the um, Bears, I'm not going to take off the board yet, but they probably will be. Commanders are obviously off the board. So that's two teams that wouldn't do it, right? So let's uh, keep taking a look here at some of these other teams that may need a quarterback, like, for instance, the uh, the Atlanta Falcons. They're poised here at number eight. That's still too high, right? Like, you're not trading the number eight overall pick for Geno Smith. What could maybe happen, and this also goes for the Bears, I think, would be you could go, okay, let's say Atlanta or Chicago doesn't like Penix, doesn't like Knicks, doesn't like McCarthy, doesn't like those other tier two quarterbacks that they could draft and they're like we want a quarterback now especially the Falcons by the way like I don't think the Bears would consider this the Falcons might because their roster is in a good shape their roster is good they just need a quarterback would Atlanta be willing to go the number eight for the number 16 plus Geno I I still kind of feel like that they, they wouldn't do that and I say this as somebody that supports Geno very much. I don't think you give up a top 10 pick, even if you're just moving down eight spots for an older quarterback who isn't like Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes level. Like like when the Jets traded for Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers was really, really old, but Aaron Rodgers also a legend of the game, one of the great quarterbacks ever. And um, it, was a, it was a very different circumstance, even though Aaron Rodgers was so old. And by the way, the Jets probably really regret doing that right now. So I don't know if that's even the lesson you want to take from there. But um, yeah, I kind of feel like the Falcons probably wouldn't do it for that. Now, maybe you could work something out where it's like the Falcons give up their third round, their second and third round pick or something. They have 43, 74. I do think that's probably on the table here. So I'm not going to cross them off completely, but 
looking through some of these other teams, you got a team like the Denver Broncos. Sean Payton just got a six-year deal in Denver. I don't think they're going to want to trade for a uh, Geno Smith when Sean Payton's probably thinking like, I'm going to be here a while. Let's get a young quarterback that I like in this draft. Supposedly, he really likes J.J. McCarthy. So I'm kind of feeling like the Broncos aren't going to do it. The Broncos don't want to do business with us anyway. We know how that works out for them. So these teams are starting to fall off here. Um, of the remaining teams that I have on this list, I have six, and that includes the Bears, who realistically, I, 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 I'm just going to cross them off, Steelers, Raiders, Vikings, Bucks, Falcons. At least a couple of those teams are going to say, we don't want Geno, we don't like how he plays, we don't want the, to do the older quarterback thing. Like, if you're a team like the Vikings, you should still be in a position to draft Bo Nix, right, at number 11. And by the way, number 11 is still too much to give up for Geno, probably. Same with number 12 for Denver anyway. So that makes it hard. So if you're talking about that whole idea of giving up a first-round pick, a late first-round pick for Geno Smith, your only realistic option is Tampa Bay. So... The Tampa Bay situation would make some sense. Maybe the Raiders, because the Raiders pick isn't that high. It's at 13, but you would probably have to throw more stuff in on top of Geno for them to consider that. I still don't think they would. That 13 pick is pretty valuable. So if you're talking about getting that late first round pick, which I'm sorry, that's what I need to give up Geno. That's what he's worth to me, and I think that's what he's worth to, to this team right now. I know some people don't see it that way, but... That's how I'm seeing this. I mean, you're not going to be able to um, trade with really anybody else in this back end of the first round, right? You're not trading him to Baltimore. You're not trading him to Detroit or Kansas. Like, like none of these make any sense. The ones that make sense would be Pittsburgh and Tampa Bay. Now, the Tampa Bay thing makes some sense to me because, remember, they, um, they're probably losing Baker Mayfield this, this offseason because he's going to want a ton of money. Maybe they say, hey, I think Geno Smith can give us the same thing. Like, Geno Smith can do what Baker did pretty easily, right? Like, Baker's, um, if they were able to squeeze a really good season out of Baker, and I know they lost uh, Dave Canales to uh, uh, Carolina, so that makes this a little less interesting because Canales is the former QB coach for Geno Smith. This is kind of where I would look for a trade. I would say, hey, Tampa Bay, you give us 26, we give you Geno Smith, and we just call it good. That's something that I would definitely listen to. If Pittsburgh wants to get involved with their 20 pick, that's something I would listen to. Those are the only two really realistic scenarios I see where we can end up with a first-round pick out of this. And the the third scenario would be Atlanta second-round pick plus third-round pick because there's no way they're giving up their uh, first. But um, those would be the three Geno Smith trade scenarios. But I just don't think it's very likely to happen even beyond that. Like, if you're Atlanta, you can just get Penix and uh, Penix will probably do really well in Atlanta because they have a good offensive line in place. That fits. If you're Tampa Bay, you can just keep Baker. It's going to cost money, but um, even if you don't want to keep Baker, there are going to be other guys available to you in free agency. You can throw a big contract at Kirk Cousins if you like Cousins a lot, which some of these coaches really do. You can... Um, try to reclimate Ryan Tannehill. You can try to bet low on guys like Gardner Minshew or Jake Browning. These are things that are going to cost less than Geno Smith. You don't have to give up picks. So even though the free agency class of quarterbacks is not that great, and even though this draft isn't quite as QB sexy as it used to be, I still think that it's just hard to make this trade work. Like um, um, t even Tampa Bay, you're sitting there at 26. You can sit there and think, eh, somebody will fall. Like, like, maybe we get Spencer Rattler, it's 26. Maybe maybe Bo Nix falls to 26. Maybe McCarthy falls to 26. And if it doesn't happen, then I guess we're just uh, going to take it for a year with Kyle Trask, which, yeah, at that point, I'd probably be like, man, I wish we had Geno. But, man, um, it's just hard to make all the moving pieces work here. And, again, I need a real asset back. I'm not giving Geno away for some fourth-round pick the way some people are trying to say. There's no universe where that's happening. He's worth more than that, especially when I'm paying most of his salary. So that's what I got. Um, there is some stuff here you can work out, but I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening in a way that makes people happy. Just a few teams that would be con willing to pot potentially do it. Maybe, the, uh, by the way, the Raiders' second-round pick, third-round pick is also kind of appealing. They've got 44 and 77. But it's just tough to make it work. And why not just... 
see how Grub, Grub and Smith work together. I think they could work really well together. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks.